welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today, my guest is Drew Jackson. Hey, hey. The infamous. <laughs> so, yeah, we were just talking about how, uh, how you know, fucking, or, you know, it's hard to get along with your parents no matter what point in life it is, right? <laughs> You're talking about your daughter's uh, fighting with you. I was talking about I'm fighting with, you know, my folks, my well, my mom at least, you know, always fucking fighting with them. And, I you know, we try to make up. We do make up. And we end up fighting again. And it's just like this this cycle that just happens all the time. I fight authority and authority always wins. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh I I feel like really strong about my my uh my opinions. And when uh somebody else has a stronger opinion than mine that I don't agree with, I just I don't. I, I'm not a fighter. I yeah. just I just disagree and go my other go my own direction. Yeah. And I I think I I uh, I've taught that to my children, so much so that one doesn't talk to me now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> That's how it happens sometimes. Pretty I, pretty ironic. I don't talk to my dad, and she doesn't talk to her dad. So that's just the way it works. Yeah. 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 I spent a long time not talking to my dad growing up. And then I I made up with my father, of course, and then I spent a long time not not dealing with my fucking mom as well. Just that whole concept of like uh, you know just trying to create boundaries and create space and like define reality on your own terms as mm -hmm. opposed to what people are trying to f make your reality based on their experience. You're your own man. You can. You, this is a free world and a free country. You've you've already met met the age limits. You can do whatever you want to do. That's what the wonderful thing is. You right. don't have to answer to them anymore if you don't choose to. Well, you wouldn't think so, but apparently that's the... That's <laughs> what <laughs> parents think differently. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a parent, uh, you know. I, I, have, yeah. I have three girls, you know, and uh, I swore to God I was never going to impose on them. I was never going to uh, push them uh, in, in any direction. I would only just give them, offer them guidance, which that's all I've ever done, and give them assistance when they need it, because yeah. that's really what humans need. You know, they yeah, need none of us up. need to be pushed into any direction. And like I was telling you earlier off the air, if it hadn't been for me wanting, not wanting to take my own direction in music, uh, and wanting to listen to my father, we we wouldn't be sitting here today because I wouldn't have. Uh, never done music because that, that was up to, up to my father i would have never done music yeah you were saying he did not want you to be a musician not at all yeah no <laughs> what did he want you to be uh, he obviously he, he had was a plan a, for your life well he was a, a successful computer programmer and that's what he wanted me to do yeah. okay okay yeah. and uh i have no interest in programming computers <laughs> whatsoever. It's boring, man. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to program computers, bro. <laughs> That's just hard, all hard enough putting together uh, digital soft audio software stuff yeah. on music. You know, I mean, that's about the, the extent of my limitations with with programming. Yeah, unless yeah. you're into it, and then it's super awesome, right? right? If you're fucking into computer programming, then it's like right. But there's people that are there's people that exist for that. Exactly. <laughs> he's doing codes. Do it, yeah. you know, he's doing codes for big, huge si systems. Like he programmed the the wastewater system for San Francisco. Oh wow! <laughs> the things that open and close all the the gates throughout the whole sewer system in the city. That's so legit. He uh, he did a program for San Francisco General Hospital. Uh, Leslie Salt. Um, I mean, he had some huge, major, major accounts wow. of Sac uh, city of Sacramento. Oh, yeah, it's my so, neck of the woods. So he's, yeah, mine too. Oh, yeah. yeah we, I lived there for 10 years. Yeah, I, I grew up in Stockton, man. Yeah. So it's not, you know, not that's, too far that's away. That's where, where all the poor kids grew up. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly <laughs> what that was. <laughs> that's where all the poor kids grew up, man. Uh, I like Stockton. I, I, I fished there a lot. Did you really? You didn't eat any of it, did you? Um, in the no, nah, not really. You don't want to eat that shit. Mostly catfish. And yeah. Bass and stuff. Stripers. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like habitually throw fish back now. We were up fishing on Me top too. of a mountain in, in Utah, catching these beautiful rainbow trout, and I'm just tossing them back. I'm like, we might have, we could have cooked it, but it's like, ah, I got food. Yeah, you know? we but we usually do. And you we keep a couple, you know, in the clean lakes. Yeah, we keep yeah. a couple. Like last week, we were up there, we kept three, then we probably caught thirty. Yeah, and let the rest of them go. 
just keep one for our, our tradition is to have one meal while we're up there, you yeah. know, live off the land, so to speak. I like that. And then let the rest of them go. But I caught some beautiful fish. I'll have to show you some pictures. I would love to see some pictures of some fish, bro. Yeah. I always see your uh, photos online on Facebook. I'm fucking catch an awesome, huge fish, man. Thanks, I, man. Uh, I am seriously jealous, bro. Like, we just go and fucking throw a pole on the side of a fucking lake and hang out. We don't... Uh, you know, we don't go out deep sea fishing on badass boats. Oh, yeah. I do that, too. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Haven't been out in a year. No, yeah. Where's the last Johnson. place you went? I was just up in Eagle Valley, Nevada last weekend. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. No, there. I mean, uh, deep, the deep sea uh, thing. Deep sea. Last time we went uh, was last summer. It was about a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, I caught some tuna and some uh, yellowtail. Out where? We were, we launched out of... Uh, San Diego, and we fished um, in Mexican waters and some of the banks out, you know. Some killer fishing out there. Oh, yeah. It's a big, big, beautiful fish. Yeah. 20 to 40 pound fish. Just ridiculous. They're catching them bigger than that right now. Some of the bluefin they're catching are two, 300 pounds right now. It's ridiculous. That's for so much money. A fucking <laughs> tuna that size. Oh, my God. Yeah. Damn. That's so much money. And killer sushi, too. Yeah. So you said you were uh, you were just up uh, where at Eagle Valley? Eagle Valley. Yeah, it's up by Pioch. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. I've been going up there for almost twenty years, and uh, there's a couple of lakes up there: Eagle Valley Reservoir and Echo Canyon Reservoir. And there's a little creek that runs in between both of them. Really? There's a resort up there that's got uh, RV places, got cabins, little store, little bar. They were actually wide open when we were up there. No masks, nothing. They said they've had like one COVID case up there the whole time. So that's good to hear. Yeah, it was nice. It was it was like living normal again, you know, not having to worry about putting a mask on before you go in anything. People were sitting at the bar drinking and, you know, having a good time and just relaxed. Yeah, that's my kind of gig. I, I'd I'd like to live more like that. Yeah, me too, man. But I'm too I'm too crazy. Right, like, <laughs> yeah, you I can't go, do my you eccentric nuts. ass nuts bullshit. <laughs> you would go nuts. up in the mountains. <laughs> like I say to myself, I think I could sit up there and just, uh, you know, I could just meditate and grow vegetables and and hang out on a mountain. I could totally do that for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> I just did it for a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was like if I'm stuck up there, man. Fuck, I don't know how long I can do it, but uh, you know, ideally that'd be that'd be the way to go. But well, it's only three hours from here, three and a half hours. You're not stuck. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, three and a half hours. Yeah, I actually uh, I need I'm gonna, I'm gonna go check that out, man. I might get a little marker from you where that campsite is, cause uh, I'm looking for another place to s- camp and uh, that's a little closer. Although three hours, I mean, that's still that's basically what I'm doing to go to Utah. It's at, the at same this point. same from here to uh, Panguitch as it is to to Pioch. Valley. Yeah. Okay. But still, lakes. Uh, it's you said two lakes and a creek and. It's mm-hmm. right up here, man. Fuck, I need to get that shit up. I love camping. We just got back from uh, Arizona. We went up to, um, damn, now I can't think of the name of the spot, but it was over by that Behringer Meteor Crater, which is fucking beautiful, man. Uh, you know, forest, like we went 25 miles into the forest, just straight up a mountain, and so it was just deep, deep woods. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, it was gorgeous, man. We were on the side of a, um, on the side of a cliff. They call it the end of the world. Because it's like, there's just, it's forest camping, but if you go way off to the side over here, there's this huge cliff area where there's like, We're going to have the trade spots, spots. man. I've oh, never yeah. heard of this. It sounds it's, cool. It was fucking amazing. And, and you can see, you can see off the end of the distance. I did some time lapse stuff of it. I'll have to show you too. With it, uh, I like, I've been like, I've been bringing my GoPros around with me everywhere doing time lapses and little weird shots here and there, um, trying to figure out cool stuff to do with my GoPro that I can like make into something and put a video online for people. That's cool. Um, but the, the time lapse stuff has definitely been the best stuff I've been getting. You know, like my brother built a, a tight ass go kart recently and we took that out and fucking strapped GoPros all over it and, you know, <laughs> we're fucking around with that. Um, but that's not really anything, you know. It's fun to watch for us, and no one else wants to see that. I but would, I'd dig to see something like that for sure. Yeah, yeah. We might, uh, we might shoot some more. I might, uh, fish if you jump it off the end of the world. Oh, dude, it was like the fucking. <laughs> and then you don't get your cut GoPros back though. No, you don't. You don't get them back from that. <laughs> I had them hanging off. Dude, I had them hanging off the side of a cliff. Uh, like you could like kind of scooch off the side of a cliff. You know, I ain't like 
climbing on anything or anything dangerous like that. But then I can hook it onto a uh, onto a tree branch, and then there's just nothing around it. And it fucking captures the whole valley, and we were just getting sunrises and sunsets and shit like that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was beautiful. Sounds like it'd be a cool place to have a drone, too. Dude, I need to get a new drone, man. I really need a new drone. My shit crashed. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's an expensive crash. Dude, if I, if I was out in uh, L.A. filming some uh, some skate park stuff on uh, the Long Beach Pier, and then the fucking drone just, like, I'm going to go this way. Uh, I don't know. I just bought it off. Ant. You know, it was like a brand new refurbished drone, kind of like just like with second flight with it or whatever. And it just goes, I'm going over here uh, and just crashed into a tree, like a couple palm trees, like 20 feet up in the air. Uh, and dude, there was a fucking homeless guy sleeping under the palm trees. I was just like, please don't land on this guy. <laughs> you know, for, like, the last thing I need to do is hurt somebody as well. Right. Yeah, so thankfully he didn't land on him, but I had to send that drone back. And I haven't gotten a new one since it was so discouraging, right? And I was yeah. just like, fuck, that was expensive. I don't want to spend a bunch of money on another one. But I'm gearing up to get one. So my buddy just got a, a new drone uh, and his license and everything. Like, he's legit drone pilot now, I guess. So I'm going to have him go out and show me some stuff. Cool. And then maybe I'll buy a new one. There you go. Because I, I need a new toy. I, I, I could definitely see you being doing drone stuff. Oh, for yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. I have a few. But that was like a DJI 3. And uh, it was, uh, it carried a full size GoPro on it. And it, uh, it's just fucking thing is huge. It was a big, it was a big drone. It would go really high. Yeah, it was cool. It was really cool. But uh, yeah, it just took off and just, I mean, it's just, what am I supposed to do about that? Right? Nothing. Nothing. Somebody drove one into my yard one morning. I, I took a shot at it. I never saw it again after that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> They're flying it into your yard? Yeah. Yeah. Either either things getting away from him or that guy's a fucking creeper. One yeah. of the two, right? I think he was a creeper. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that was happening to me with... Uh, I was just I was showing Angela how to fly some of the, the drones out front here because I have some smaller ones. And fucking right away, she's like, just fucking burying it in people's backyards. And I'm like, pull that shit back, man. You can't just be flying over people's houses. <laughs> up and down the street. Just go up and down the street. And it's like, right near the tree? Okay. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Goddamn drones. Yeah, they're a nightmare. But I got a fucking Falcon one, too. I could talk about drones forever. The Millennium Falcon's impossible to fly. Is it? You've got to be moving. All right. It just gets away from you. Yeah. It won't hover or do like the stationary hover or anything. So if you don't have momentum with it, fucking thing ain't, it's not staying in the air. Oh, uh, that doesn't sound like any fun. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's made out of foam, so you can fly it around the house and shit and like crash it into stuff and it's uh, not going to really hurt anything. So, uh, but it was, it was a fun toy, but, um, learning how to fly on the Falcon because it's like, no, you, you got to fly that thing. Yeah. It, it really made, getting my hands on a regular drone that'll just hover and like do these side to sides and hover it's like they, oh oh wow <laughs> <laughs> i could i could do this yeah fuck all the, the months dealing with the millennium falcon trying to get get that thing to stay in the air for 30 seconds <laughs> fuck <laughs> uh, so yeah man so what you been doing to uh keep yourself busy during the virus you've been doing anything uh interesting Making any music? No, you know, I've been kind of taking a break from the music, to be honest with you. Um, we have done a couple gigs. Yeah. Uh, we played one. Well, we did a couple of the, you know, the online things, you know, where we recorded at our studio, our rehearsal studio. I think we did. And then we did one at a, a bar. We did a fundraiser for the Bearded Lady in Perump. And then we actually played a gig there uh, when it opened up there for, what was it, a week or two or whatever. Yeah. So we played there, and then we also played a gig over at the uh, Underground House on 4th of July, which I don't know if you ever heard of that place or not, but it's really cool. you got to check Where's it that out. Where's that out? It is on Spencer and Flamingo, and it is a 15,000-square-foot house, 15 feet underground, and it was built in the— Oh, the uh, bomb shelter? It's like a bomb shelter, yeah. Well, that's, that's it. It's just eccentric guy built it in the 70s as such— because it was still, you know. Cool. You can go to that house oh, hell and yeah. play like, shows? 
Well, yeah, we were actually the first, uh, us and uh, Burn Unit were the first bands to ever actually play a show there. They've had like uh, solo acoustic artists play there before in the past. Okay. They do weddings, they do parties, it's 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 rentable. Underground House is, uh, Underground I've seen House. that on several specials. Yeah, it's on, it was on a uh, HBO or, excuse me, Netflix uh, special world's weirdest homes i think yeah i saw some of the guys i know in that special i was like i know all those cats <laughs> in the background what the fuck are they doing in that house yeah mark, so mark doing volker shows there. yeah mark volker is uh is currently managing it and he lives in the facility that's above it okay and uh yeah we just decided that it was you know we were fed up with uh not being able to play and so it sucks we had uh i think we had like 75 people there that's awesome yeah it was cool you know yeah. the place is neat it's got a pool yeah i mean it's it's it's, it's it looks like does it still look like it's like an above ground yeah like it has it the has illusion like a, it has the illusion of an outdoors yeah it. yeah it has grass and uh big trees and you know all all faux style trees but uh and then the the ceilings and the outsides painted like skies with mountains and clouds and so it kind of gives you that allure, yeah. But the awesome. but the whole decor is uh, very '60s and '70s. Has kept it uh, true to the to the time period. So it's almost like walking into an episode of the Brady Bunch or something when you go down there because it's just you know shag carpets and pink tile and paisley wallpaper and you know it's it's really 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 cool. It's it's hard to describe, but when you go down there, I mean, for me growing up in that era. It's, it's it's pretty special to go and see that somebody's put that time into keeping it, uh, you know, time period correct, and it's you know pristine. He's done such a good job. That's awesome. Yeah, I got to go check that shit out. You now, got to, man. man. Uh, Undergroundhouse.com. Go show or something. You can like do a that. virtual tour right now. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see. We can fucking put that online. That's not YouTube stuff. Underground House. Mm-hmm. Let me look that up real quick. Yeah, yeah. You can go there and uh, schedule tours. Um, you can. Like I said, you can have events there. They're wide open. That's tight. Yeah, it's full. Uh, here, what do we just go here? What this? What's this going on? Doesn't like it. It doesn't like it. I don't know. It's just showing me this little black window. It says <laughs> underground house. <laughs> under, under under construction. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I don't know. Uh, I, don't know. I was on there a couple do. weeks ago. It was Are on. You? Yeah, there's like a, a virtual tour button that you can hit, and it'll take you. You can go through, and then there's a bunch of different photos that you can. Uh, oh, it's Underground House dot Vegas. I bet there was music playing underneath that. The Underground House. It's probably Underground House music. <laughs> oh yeah, here's a here's a gallery. Can we full size some of this stuff here, man? Yeah, look at this. Boom. Oh yeah, you can see out the back. Click some buttons. Underground house. Oh shit, that's tight. I love neon. Oh yeah, see, it does look like it's outside. That uh, yeah, there's some patio shots. area right here. Yeah, there's some more shots of it. You'll see if you keep scrolling there. Oh look at that! I love that bathroom. Pink is my jam. Yeah, I like the trees and yeah. shit by the That's pool. That's outside, kind of, right there, yeah. Right, let's see here. That's another shot of the outside, outside. Yeah, turf and trees, and I mean, I, that would that would definitely slow the uh, insanity process down a little bit if you were stuck in there as a, as an actual bomb shelter. Mm-hmm. Nice, they got the little period suit. That's slick. Oh, yeah, look at that. I like it. Underground house. That's cool. So you guys played out here, I'm assuming? Yep, that's exactly where we played, yep. That's cool. Yeah, there's plenty of room to set up a PA and everything down there. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure they got killer power, right? Oh, yeah. They probably have custom power installations for a bunker. Yep, and the acoustics down there were actually really good. The sound was, was spot on. Oh, were they? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, look at that. There's a freaking, uh, that's a great shot of the outdoors. Yeah, with the pool. With the pool. Yeah, we had people in there swimming and partying. Underground house. That's cool that it's open. I saw that on that bomb shelter uh, or, like, weird house show or whatever, right? And mm -hmm. I was like, fuck, I need to go check that out, man. Yeah, you do. Now you really do. Now I really do. If it's open to the public like that, damn. Yeah, just give them a call. 
Yeah, yeah. We could probably get you a special tour too. Right, I'll bring my cameras. Maybe I'm on the show and do a little 30 minute segment or something like that. They were talking about maybe doing another uh, music event here coming up pretty soon. We'll see. That'd be cool, man. I I need more music, man. Like, it sucks not having uh, sucks not having gigs and shows and that experience, man. There's an energy exchange For that sure. happens there where uh, you know whenever I would be doing live concerts. Especially in like a small, the small clubs, like, you know, when we were doing fucking the like Vamped or Beauty Bar or stuff like that, Canyon Club out here, like that, you know, 200, 300 people crammed into a room watching a fucking loud ass system and a big show, man. The energy there, it's like going to, you know, it's like going to a fucking church or something, man. You know, you get this, you get this, um, or a gym or, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you get this exchange. Adrenaline, adrenaline like, and, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, certainly miss it. We uh, I think we canceled a total of somewhere around, or, or rescheduled and canceled, uh, about 18 shows this year. Yeah. Yeah, so That's far. a lot of shows, man. Yeah, so um, last year was probably the busiest. It was. It wasn't even probably. It was the, the band's busiest year. And I think we had, I want to say it was somewhere around, we're close to 70 gigs. For the year wow it was a pretty good yeah. year you know made some decent cash yeah yeah i mean we did the band did well there and we had that little mini residency at the house of blues so that's really what kept us the most busy but we had an, a lot of nice uh side shows at you know laughlin um and then we you know always had vamped coming in you know kicking in so looking forward to getting back to doing it again for sure. Yeah, big time, man. Everybody's been doing like a lot of the, the like online streaming stuff and and uh, what was it, Jam Kazam? We were talking to Avron uh, earlier this week uh, about Jam Kazam, where you can like play with everybody, you know, just online as long as you have a, a decent internet connection. Sounds like a video game. Yeah, it's not the same thing though, right? Yeah. It's not the same. It's not thing. the human connection. Yeah, that's what that's that's what. Yeah, humans in the room. That he's energy man that fucking energy of that everyone vibe. yeah that vibe that everyone puts out people screaming like i'm working on some stand-up comedy stuff right and it's like uh you know researching it it's, it's it's all about an exchange of the people in the room you know you read the people in the room i'm trying to make that person laugh you know or like or the heckler yeah and you're out there telling stories and like feeding off of what's working and what's not working mm -hmm. um and like rehearsing it at home and fucking around at home and stuff like that is fun, but uh, it doesn't have the energy of me doing this in front of people. And right. and uh, it's just a beautiful thing, man. And that pulling that out of our existence, it really shows you how important it is to you know how much we miss that experience. I used to fucking do that four nights a week, five nights a week. Yeah, you did. And just be fucking. Just show, 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 show. It was crazy. We kind of took it for granted, I think. Yeah. I always just was like, yeah, I mean, you think um, I, I, you think that kind of stuff is, is, you know, weatherproof when it comes to all these kind of, like, crisis and crashes. Well, especially if crashes. you're in the city of entertainment. Yeah. There's you would think that there would still be entertainment. <laughs> you would think <laughs> you would yeah but with the pandemic it's a totally different animal yeah you know what are you supposed to fucking do i don't want to get everybody sick but i want to play shows uh you know it's it's uh it's I a rough there, one i, I think wasn't there's expecting ways to do it, it. To, yeah i think there's ways to do it i mean we figured out ways to do other things i don't see why we have to shut the music down i i, I don't really agree with the decision but um especially when you go to convenience stores and you see people in there all the time without masks or yeah. standing close to one another and you know and i mean so i was just reading something uh this morning online um somebody was went to a doctor's office and the doctor's office was saying you know hey you know we're taking all these extra precautions because you know i mean you're you're going where sick people are anyways so now you're even increasing your odds that much more and she watched like 20 people grab the same pencil yeah. and use it to fill out their medical charts. <laughs> and I'm thinking, 
we overlook some pretty simplistic things that we could be doing. What's a pen cost, you know? Yeah. You know, and, and you just put a jar on and that. They, but we're continuing to allow all those types of things to happen. And yet we can't sit at a bar together six feet apart because that's too dangerous. The, these things are just things that I'm having a hard time yeah. trying to uh, I mean, none of it makes make fucking, sense out, it's, out of. It, it's not going to make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's people who have this information and they're just like, what the fuck are we supposed to do? I mean, we're, we're trying to set up some kind of radio and everyone goes, wah, I don't want regulations. And it's like, well, we don't want you all to die. And they go, I don't know. Like, uh, you, what, do, what do you have? And he goes, I mean, masks that it could help, you know? And everyone goes, fuck you. I don't want a fucking mask. And it's just like, oh, they don't like that one either. I don't know what to do, man. Every, more people are getting sick. And they just, they just like try to, you know, like, ah, if, 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 if it was not, your job. To, at least they're not dying, though. Yeah, if it was your job to figure out, like, what to do to stop everyone from dying, you know, it's, it's what rules do you implement? And where do you start? Where do you stop? And it's, it's, it's a slippery slope, man. It is. I don't think there's a lot of people that are dying, though. Yeah. There's really not. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> there's people that have gotten sick. There's no doubt about you know, it. There's people that have died. There's no doubt about it. But 1% of three point or 330 million still 3.3 yeah. 3 million people though yeah it's a lot of fucking people yeah that's just our country so i mean uh i think that we'll see i mean i think i think when this thing finally comes to an end and uh we look back on this time period we'll see that uh there was definitely um some exaggerations going on yeah my personal feeling about it anyways yeah. I hope I, I'm wrong. No, nah, I think everybody could have just fucking done their part a little better in the beginning, and then we wouldn't be in the situation we're in, but no one wanted to jump on it, you know? America was like, it just proved how selfish we are as a country. Like, every other country was like, oh, do we need to join up and, like, do this this fucking team effort real quick? Well, we cool, did. team effort. We did. And America goes, fuck you! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you! And we're like, just... You know, just help out, you know, do your part. And he goes, I ain't doing my part for shit. That's pretty much the attitude I, I get every day on my Facebook timeline stream. Um, is everyone well, there's just definitely like, some people yeah. like that. But I think in general, if you look back at and what we did as a, no one here, as a city here, as a city here, we did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, I, I, did. Know, I know, I know, I, I didn't because I'm essential. Yeah. I've been out in it every day. And I mean, I wear my mask when I go out to stores and stuff. Right here. <laughs> But uh, uh, I, I haven't gotten sick, uh, and I, I, I know that I have some friends that have gotten sick. Um, but I think we did a, I think I thought we did a pretty good job at doing what they told us to do, which was just to flatten the curve and stay indoors. Vegas isn't just. I don't think it's just Vegas. It's the, the the, the, the residents, whole country. The residents of Vegas is the problem as much as because it's a place where people want to travel from out of the country yeah or from within our country and out of the country actually but i don't even think they're allowing that right now but no we're, we're the worst like we're the worst in the world right now right like everybody else is getting over it and america's kind of like still not following rules not getting on board not fucking doing procedures everyone's wanting to fight about everything instead of just like being on team us because we're all in the same we're all in the same fucking boat, man. Like, I don't give a fuck what team you want to claim. We're fucking stuck on the same boat together. And uh, well, I, I think it's because we've been met with a lot of skepticism, yeah. especially with all the information that came out of Florida this week. We're all looking at, uh, you know, how does this happen so fast when everything was so calm and cool? And then now we're like, well, yeah, those numbers aren't really correct. It's it's not 10 percent. It wasn't. It's not 100%, it's only 10%. Well, you start doing that multiple times, then it just creates this, it creates two things. It creates fear, and it creates anxiety and, and anger for, for people that see that there's something going on besides just a, a virus here. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where we're at as a country right now. I think some people have the right to be upset about it. I think some people overreact. Oh, yeah. Too. Um, but I think everybody wants uh to do the right thing i think as humans we all do want to do the right thing for but us for, for us. me but you know not for everybody banging around they want on to the do street, the right thing for them banging around on the streets and 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 vandalizing and tagging and 
in protesting. Uh, I mean, that to me doesn't seem like that. That's really helped much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just going to get a lot of people sick. <laughs> I but, think I think that's what happened in California. I think that's what because I know some people that were affected by yeah. COVID there that were out during, protesting. During, they were they were around during the protests and then they were at a gathering. Yeah, and then they got sick. The family got sick. I took a lot of shit in the beginning of the uh, the virus because we shut our doors down and didn't go to Easter and. You know, all that stuff that, you know, in the beginning, the first two months, we all did that. We were like holding it. Well, no, we didn't all do that. A lot of people said, fuck everybody and just did whatever they felt like doing. A lot of people did. And a lot and and a lot of those people tell people like you and me who actually did quarantine. And we were like, no, we're going to take this seriously. Who knows what the fuck's going on? You go, fuck you, man. That didn't happen in your life. That happened a bunch in my life. Mm, Not not. I mean. From what uh, probably my view of seeing stuff on on social media, yeah, maybe, but no, yeah. most most people that I know were that I know personally were doing the right thing. <laughs> but I mean, I was also out, like I said, because I'm I'm working yeah. every day. I'm I'm at the Home Depots. I'm at the nurseries. I'm at you know Walmart or I'm I'm at the stores and I see the the a lot of the people not obeying or participating yeah. the way that they should be or um, out there doing things on for their personal needs and not for what's good for, you know, like we talked about for everybody, like to put off your little personal projects for a couple months and let's, yeah. let's let this thing ride out and then, and then see. So maybe, so maybe you're right. Maybe there, I did view some people that were, that were abusing um, their time out and, and not, uh, not quarantining yeah but yeah there's a lot of it out there man a lot of a lot of selfishness there people is. just don't want to don't give a fuck about anybody else but themselves. Well, we're a selfish country we are it's it's shown itself it's shown itself in spades in this situation where um it, it was definitely required of us to not be self-absorbed and uh and the whole country just sat there and told everyone to get fucking bent you know it's it was really sad to see um but it was the reaction i expected from this country to be honest i mean i didn't expect anything different from a you know three million three hundred million trolls you know so (laughs) that's you know it's it's kind of what we've turned into as a country you know uh uh, it's have you done any research on uh agenda 21 no i this is this so this is the second time i've heard agenda 21 you need you need to you need to what look is at it? it yeah you don't know you don't want to talk about it um i mean i can just give you an overall brief description of it uh, back in october of 2018 um there was a group of world elitists um that met um bill gates was there um and they all discussed um what it would be like um if there was a, a world pandemic and what steps what procedures what uh, measures would be taken? Yeah, because they're inevitable. It be, how would it be uh, fed into the media? Um, and yeah, and they said they said the same thing. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. Yeah, it's inevitable. And then it's like a meteor coming and towards then, us. Like four months later, it became reality. Yeah. So, um, it's uh, it's a little deeper than that, but it's definitely worth your time to take a look at who the players are uh, in the that were in it and involved and how long they've been meeting prior to that. And, um, it, it leaves a lot of, uh, a lot of questions. If you start really re- reading about it, about what, you know, what we're dealing with right now, for sure. Yeah. I mean the, yeah, the, the massive misinformation campaigns that are going on is, it's just devastating. You literally can't know what to think. You can't. Uh, you can't. You can't take a side on anything. It's just all just blasted in all directions, and um, and they're doing that on purpose. For sure. That's definitely happening on purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, that's not a that's not a, an oopsie. No. <laughs> they want no. no one to know what's what they can believe, right. and they want you to not be able to trust your own family. Uh, it's 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 pretty obvious like I, I agree with you there yeah i mean you you think you're getting information from some trustworthy source but then 
that that source turns around and says something that you in your own gut know is not true and so now you're like questioning you know you're questioning everything everybody's questioning everything nobody knows you know like like we're talking about like you know oh hey the case rates 100 percent in florida oh wait no sorry no it's only 10 percent oh well yeah uh, you know it's like what do you what do you believe nothing yeah i don't believe shit <laughs> uh, i personally all like all i know that so uh, there's only certain things i can believe right and that is like the world shut down because there's a fucking plague going on mm -hmm. uh and the rest of the world has cut us off from them well we've done some cutting off too yeah mm -hmm. because we just can't get our shit together mm -hmm. um yeah, and uh, and 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 also, I I'll, I'll never have a job again. <laughs> 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 so we're never gonna get this virus under control at the rate we're going. It's just gonna keep doing this. Fucking. Uh, oh, they said like, they're gonna have a vaccine by the end of the year. Yeah, let us all just go get it and see who dies. <laughs> I'm at that point now. I never got a flu vaccine. I already got the fucking virus, honestly. Like in January, I got that shit. Oh, did you? Yeah, because I was doing CES. And I fucking totally got, I got sick as fuck for two weeks and I don't get sick. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I take care of myself. You know? and so if I get sick, it's like, oh, oh, I'm sick. And then like three days later, I'm fine. You know, and my body kicks the shit out of it. I'm gonna, two weeks, just like they say, all the, all the, all the symptoms that they say, COVID and all this shit, you know, I fucking couldn't breathe, hacking up along fucking two solid weeks of being sick. Yeah. And oh, I was uh, definitely exposed to it. It was in my yeah. circle. I had, knew a couple of people that had it back then too, earlier than that. I think it was in December. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's uh just, everybody's going to if 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 it's if it's like a flu like thing like this where it's just going to keep fluctuating. It's like, well, the fuck are we supposed to do as a society at that point, you know? We got to fucking move on. We can't just hunker down forever and let everything fall to pieces. Well, you, we've had pandemics. We've had yeah. them before, you know. Mm -hmm. and there's been devastation and there's it's There'll be another one after this. And there'll be another one after that one. And, you know, and there'll be meteors coming towards our planet. And there's all kinds of things that are going to, you know, these these in-game level events. But, you know, I mean, this isn't, it doesn't really feel like an in-game. It feels like it's being exaggerated extensively. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like, uh, I mean, they're coming. They're coming left and right. And it's like, we can't just crumble. We can't. Um, and hopefully this kind of woke everyone up a little bit for as long as this, gen you know, section of humans exist on this planet. You know how many people are on the planet that experienced the Spanish flu and how horrible it was. I mean, not very many people. And it took just the way that our, you know, our memory works and our generation gaps work. It's just like if it's going to come every century or so, we're never going to be prepared for it because we don't believe it. I, you know, it's, 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 people just weren't catching up to the point that there was like, this is going to be a problem and we should nip it in the butt. And it was just like, everybody's just like, how can we minimize closing our doors? How can we minimize this, this fucking shutdown, right? As opposed to just like shut it the fuck down as a system, systematic uh, function of society because we're an advanced civilization or whatever we think we fucking are with our goddamn egos. Uh, and, and we just didn't do that. Right. Like no, the, as on a global scale, we could have fucking taken advantage of it, you know, or like some of what is it? I've fucking seen a bunch of stuff. Who knows if it's true or not, but Japan's already coming out. They're already done. It's like literally everybody always has fucking face masks on in Japan. Right. Mm -hmm. So they just, well, we still don't they know dealt how with many it, people really died. Got China. over it. China never really has come back and been honest with us about how many people <laughs> died there, how many people were sick there. So what has China been honest about anything, those right. motherfuckers? <laughs> you know, they're, they're not going to be fucking honest with us, man. They're that government is just it's just fucking in, enthralled in in secrecy, man. It's it's that that's just their game. That's the China game. The yep. China game it's is starting to sound a lot like our government. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is kind of fucking turning into, man. Uh, you know, who knows what the fuck's happening with our government? That's one of the I do like I do like that the protests are happening just because uh people need to have the shit scared out of them, you know, cuz this isn't this isn't a fucking country that has leaders. 
we're not they're the, you're not a leader if you get elected to office you're an elected official we mm. put you there there's there was six of us and uh we said you get to be the fucking hall monitor this week you know like that's all it fucking is check hall passes okay mm. we're giving the job to bob tomorrow it's mm. been a week you, th that's not a leader right but it's like they so want to convince us that there are leaders mm -hmm. that they can dictate a, uh, the law to us or like you know it's just they can make it whatever they fucking want right and that's what they're doing that's what it's turned into it hasn't turned into this whole system of like um the people have the power and give it to certain representatives to go speed the process up it's completely flipped its head on its ass it has yeah and it's, it's like more of a more of a dictator style. yeah and those representatives aren't interested in speeding the process up Right? They just no. They want to drag their fucking that would feet. Take, that time. would take power away from them. Yeah. Yeah. If they can just drag their fucking feet out and, and 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 get, you know, money from lobbyists and just fucking all of a sudden they're more millionaires, power, more power. power. Yeah. Take a few tax dollars here and there. You know, we'll pass this bill. We'll fucking give twenty five million dollars to the fucking Kennedy Foundation. They'll donate nine million to my campaign. You know that mm. kind of shit. Yep. It's awful. The second any of that happens, like the second you vote on something that gives somebody money and they immediately contribute back to you like that, I mean, there's going to be fucking tons of regulation in place that's, to that's stop how, that from happening. That's how our governor got into office here. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that shit's, uh, it's absurd, man. It's being investigated right now. Yeah. yeah. I'm really glad that we live in the times we live in. It's fucked, you know, like, um, uh, there's a lot of, of dumb dumb things that we have to do to exist in this, like dance around our words for, for people. But uh, at the same time, it's like everybody is becoming um, accountable mm -hmm. for their actions, whether they like it or not. And I like that. I think that's a pretty sweet deal. Well, it's starting to become too, where you can't be, uh, you can't have, I mean, I'm, for example, like I, um, I'm a registered independent and I've been an independent for, well, since a lot, since the Bush years. So, but I still had liberal views, yeah. you know, and I still have conservative views. And now it's getting to the point where you can only be conservative viewed or liberal viewed. You can't be, you can't be both anymore. That's what they want you to fucking think, man, you know. No, but I mean and that's what that's what's that's what's happening on with social media and everything. Oh, yeah. you know, because they're forced everybody behind the phones and the computers to lash out about what they don't like. And as soon as you say, Well, you know, I don't like this and it's a conservative view, well then the liberals are all over you and then if you have a liberal view and then the, the same thing, yeah. the conservatives lash out all over you. But you could have just that one view and still have a bunch of other views that, that those people may agree with, but it doesn't work that way on social media. I hope people learn that that's because that's not what social media is for. <laughs> Stop advertising for fucking politicians that don't give a fuck about you right. on your platform. This is your voice to the world, and you're going to give it to that asshole? Why the fuck would you do that? Right. You know? But you do. Yeah, and, uh, you know, like... Uh, Every it drives me nuts. I go on and it's always just fucking you know left right left right left right all the way down the fucking line. And it doesn't matter what you fucking say, you're gonna get mobbed by twenty assholes who just spend all fucking day on the internet fucking choking themselves out and choking off and I fucking hate what you have to say. And uh, and that's just what they live for, you know. They're just gonna. I'm just gonna scroll down and yell at everybody who doesn't wear a mask today, or does wear a mask today, and thinks that the microns are the fucking right size. It's just like shut the fuck up, troll. But that's, but that's what they're gonna do, right? That's what they're gonna do. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think. I don't think that your social media profile should ever be given to those political fuck fuckwads, right? But everybody's gotta regurgitate their opinion that was fed to them that morning. Yeah, uh, and uh, I just post pictures of fish. Yeah, I love your Facebook feed, bro. You catch the bombest fish, bro. I'm so jealous of all your fishing trips. I just caught a fish for the first time in years recently when we were up on the mountain. By the way, when we were catching those rainbow trout, nice. I haven't caught a fish for fucking ever, bro. I was so stoked. I was like, "Is there a fish on my line? That is no awesome. way!" But I see your pictures. You have amazing photos 
of some just beautiful here i can actually you know i got my computer hooked up to the screen oh look at that beautiful fish that is awesome let me look up, i'm gonna look up your facebook real quick and maybe i can pop a picture or two of some fishes on the screen so. there's a handful there's a bunch of albums full of different fish oh uh, yeah i love fishing man i got, i gotta go fishing again soon I am probably, I don't know if I'm going to go this week, after this podcast, or after the next batch We're going to go podcast. back up the mountain? Something like that, man. I was, um, I don't know. I was going to go to Kolob again, but I've been there a couple times, and then, um, I don't know. That's why I was like, I was like, oh, that, that spot you were talking about. You well, yeah. That would be sure. tight to fucking have a new, new spot to go to. I love going to a new spot. That's the best. You yeah. haven't been there? Fucking... It's just beautiful. You know, there's just something about that, man. We, it, we rotate between there, uh, Utah, and uh, the Eastern Sierras because they're all about the same distance from my house, all, all within about three and a half hours, four hours. But the Eastern Sierras is beautiful too, man. If you've never been up there, it's really nice. Oh, look at this. That's beautiful, man. Look at your fucking... Uh, boom! That too. Me and my brother have been talking about hunting we got three elk tags for this fall in that area where where eagle valley is oh really mm -hmm. and they got some nice elk up there yeah matter of fact I, I we heard you go to one Ari there. arizona is the best spot for elk it is good nevada and arizona are both very good for elk hunting yeah but i've that's that's a huge animal bro this one this one was i saw that one the other day when i was up there oh uh, snap Oh, it's starting to decompose at the mouth. Yeah. Angela would have loved that. <laughs> she always likes taking pictures of decomposing animals. Yeah. Oh, and I love this picture of the dolphins your homie posted or whoever that was. Yeah, it's a sure. sport boat captain, a friend of mine that uh, runs a boat out of uh, Newport Beach. He was coming back from San Clemente Island the other day when he filmed that. Oh, really? Yeah, he goes out there almost every day. Oh yeah, we got some we got some pictures. Here we go. Look at that. Click. Clack. We got some big ass pictures of some fish. <laughs> and then uh here we go. Fucking tight, man. There's some you've had some big ass ones on here though. Let me find some of the big big dogs on here. Oh yeah, there's some fucking Where you found that elk picture, there's a there's big tuna there. Tunas. Oh, there's two big tunas. Yep. Look at those guys. That shit's awesome. Yeah, I've never caught anything like that, man. Never done anything like that. That stuff makes you work. Oh, yeah, I bet. You'd, how long did it take you to reel one of those tunas in? Oh, those are bluefin tuna. Those are probably 40 pounds or so. They were 50, mm, 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 10, 15 on 40-pound test. Okay. Yeah, but those uh, there's a picture of a there. yellowfin in there, a uh, sea bass there. Yeah. Thanks, freaking huge. The yellowfin? Let me see if There's, I can find the yellowfin. It's right up there by that elk picture that you... How is it? Yeah. Let me go back to your timeline. Facebook's cool. Oh, yeah, this is the one I was looking for. <laughs> Holy guacamole. Yeah. That thing right there, bro. Yeah. That's amazing. Where were you at when you caught that? Puerto Vallarta. Oh, dude, I've been to Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. We, my family took a cruise uh, up and down the coast, man. Yeah, it was at the... Uh, they call the islands out there the Tres Marias. Yeah? Yeah, we were out there for two days. Dude, look at that thing. That was actually a little one for that trip. Was it really? Yeah. Holy yeah, that shit. one was 150. They had We had several that were over three. Really? Yeah. How do you pull 300? 300 pound fish? You pull as hard as you can. You pull like you're playing tug of war with, because uh, you know, that gear is heavy. It's like 150 pound test. Yeah. So you pull as hard as you can pull. That's how you have to pull. Jeez. And if you don't pull as hard as you can, then the fish knows, and they'll either take all the line off your reel or or uh, break your line, chew through the line. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nasty little fuckers. Yeah, I'm only like, I'm like a buck 60, bro. That fish should just pull me right in the water. <laughs> uh, you got leverage, though. You're strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you use the, the railing on the, on the boat, and you put your rod on the rail, and you just torque down like you're like you're playing tug of war yeah mm -hmm. fuck yeah i've never put anything on the line like that i remember my brother caught something pretty big like that off a dock when we were kids 
but uh, I've never picked up anything that size in my life, man. I'd love to though. We got we're gonna do some we're gonna do some more ventures. That's kind of half the point of this show too. We're gonna start filming like adventures out and and making little episodes about it or whatever and going out with my homies and doing crazy shit like that. Maybe me and you will go out and fucking do a fishing episode, man. We have go to. deep sea fishing and film it all and, and fucking do a little mini video. Yeah. That's it, you know. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'm supposed to be going out <clears throat> repelling soon. I'm just waiting for the heat to die down. It's, it's not, I ain't trying to go out to fucking Red Rock right now. still got another month and a half too yeah, much. Yeah, probably, yeah, late September, probably go out, you know. Once you get out by that mountain, it's not so bad. But this doesn't matter if it's August. In the evenings and the mornings, it's always nice, too. Yeah, and I've been I've been doing better about being an early riser, man. Yeah. This whole month has been like a purification, ritualistic month, man, you know. Cool. I've getting, been eating vegetarian and, like, waking up with the sun and going to sleep when the sun goes down like nine o'clock's fucking bedtime and uh i'm just trying to get my body and in, in cycle with the with the planet and everything like just kind of really do that whole hippie thing it's been fun that's, i actually feel great that's my normal that's my normal routine i'm up at i'm up before actually a little before the sun every morning and then I'm usually in bed by the time, you know, about eight thirty, nine o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. That's just been, and then gigs, that, that always screws it up because, you know, I usually get up about 3.30 in the morning and on gig nights, I'll get home at 3.30 in the morning. Yep. <laughs> so it takes a day or two for my body to readjust back to my schedule. Dude, I lived at night. I was, I was night for, um, basically ever. I mean, fuck. I like the sunrises and the sunsets too much. Yeah. To miss it. Dude, I love them too now. That's, I, when the sun's going down, I'm like, I'm taking my dog for a walk. I'm going to watch the sun uh, set, you know, it's, it's important to me. Yeah, me too. I've got probably, I got an album on my page there that's got like over 300 sun, sunrise and sunset pictures in it. Do you really? Mm -hmm. I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look that shit up. Yeah photos oh look at you you're mr popular over here too you almost got a maxed out facebook page yeah you need like 67 more friends and then you'll be one of the cool I've guys been, i've been trying to keep it down there who uh let's see albums sunrise sunset photos fucking sexy oh yeah you do see in nevada especially is um a lot of those were taken at my ranch but uh there's a, there's a handful of them that were t a lot of my take two in the morning because I'm driving through Red Rock. That's yeah, that's my ranch there. That's awesome. I drive through Red Rock to go to work every morning. So when the sun comes up through there, it's so bitching. Dude, see you're a lucky man. I am. You're a lucky man. That's I a beautiful am. life to lead. Look at that. For sure. Yeah, I'm finding it's really important. Like, dude, this whole cycling with the planet and. And, you know, being one with the fucking world like that, it uh, it's how you're supposed to kind of be doing it, I think. I mean, I, I don't think is obviously that's how you're supposed to be doing it, right? Like, <laughs> and uh, I, sp I spent, from the time I was 20-something, maybe even 19, I was working night jobs. And, uh, and then I started doing this for a living, right? The engineering, not this for a living, the engineering, running nightclubs and stuff like that. Yeah, I really can't do that during the day. No, you don't get to do that in a day. So I just I I got so on this the cycle of uh of going to bed when the sun came up. And it it's been taking a while to get my body used to the whole concept of like the sun isn't supposed to be when you're tired. <laughs> Cuz the sun oh. would drain my energy after that. Tanya does like she got she works grave. She came home this morning right when the sun was coming up and straight to bed. That's brutal. I, I, I mean, and I did She's it for so long. Sleeping right now. She'll get get up this evening when the sun starts going down and head into work. Gosh, how how often do you guys do that with the opposite schedules? That's a that's a lot of uh, a strain, huh? Mm. Or you guys like your private time? It seems to seems to work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, t typically, like it's she's got her she gets Friday, Saturday off and then sunday she doesn't go back to work until late so so we have a weekend together but during the week we're just kind of like passing each other by as we yeah go for go to work she's she's coming home from work and i'm going to work and when i'm coming home she's going so it works 
Yeah, fucking A, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I uh I don't I honestly I don't miss it. I don't miss working at night all the time. I got a I don't think I could do it. Yeah. I got not all the time. I mean, like doing gigs and stuff's one thing, but not doing it every day. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a whole different existence. Yeah. It really is. It sucks too. You know, I, I the you get home at like three, four o'clock in the morning and then, you know, obviously you can't do anything on the way home because everything's closed. And then uh you get up, you know, and it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, something like that. You, you know? can still you can go to a cannabis shop at two o'clock in the morning, yeah. can't you? I guess now. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> I uh yeah I don't think there was liquor the stores and weed shops whenever I was still working the club. It's been like five years. It's been a while. That's it's been crazy. doing corporate for a long time. Yeah, at this yeah. face. I know. It's adorable. I hardly recognize you now. You used to have a beard down to your belly button and a ponytail down to your butt crack. I did. I was I I, I loved that shit, man. Like not cutting my hair and shaving or doing it like i just didn't do anything i was just a homeless person <laughs> in the face all right just like let it grow whatever this natural fucking monkey face looks like there it is and uh i love i love that though i'm such a hippie at heart man you know Dude. i really am and uh, that's what i'd be doing now if i wasn't i mean i'm still holding out that the corporate work's going to come back obviously this is uh <laughs> me being optimistic <laughs> shaving my face still my girl wanted me to grow the beard back out, but uh, they shouldn't have a problem with that, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm a fucking, I'm an extra credit kind of cat. Oh, uh, I see. I, I wear the sport coat and and fucking, I do the whole nines, man. Like when I go to work, and a little a little extra goes a long way, kind of thing. So That's I true. shave and I get my hair cut all fucking fancy and, you know, it's corporate, it's mm -hmm. corporate client. So, uh, they don't give a shit how cool I am. They don't care that I'm in a band, you know. They they want they want clean cut people that they can rely upon, mm -hmm. and I like to present that image and fool them. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm not reliable, just that I'm a dirty scumbag, you know, at heart, anyways. But I can present the image that I'm a a responsible, outstanding citizen. <laughs> if I can, get, if you're gonna pay me. Yeah, I can watch my language. I pull my hair back into a ponytail. Not say fucking shit and cunt all the time <laughs> around clients. You know, anyways. <laughs> uh, Gotta love the corporate world. Dude, you, you know? That's what makes it all spin. It's all those corporate dickheads that make the, like, lower level existence like that like, we like to lead possible at such a grand level you know we get we have access to so much cool shit for like nothing nothing you know uh it, it just blows my mind the free cell phone that you get like if you went to like t-mobile or cricket or what you know like one of these like not at&t or verizon companies or sprint or something like that you know one of the lower level fucking companies and you get the free cell phone with whatever fucking cheapest plan they give you that is a space age technology fucking touchscreen cell phone. You know what I mean? Like for free, just for the thirty dollars a month subscription or whatever they want from you, right? Uh, that kind of shit's amazing. It's amazing. You know, you go. I was at Walmart the other day. What was it? Sixty-five inch four K Ultra HD TV for under five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. When I was buying my ten eighty Ps, I was trying as hard as I could to get them for $10 an inch, right? And then now it's like they're fucking giving away 1080p's. Like, this is garbage. Mm -hmm. you know, the 4Ks are, and the 4Ks are out. It's, it's four times as powerful as a 1080p television, and it's less than the, it was, even though inflation came up with it, right? Like, the, your dollar's worth less, but the TV still costs less, even though your dollar's worth less than it was, you know? It's amazing how fast it's going. Mm -hmm. It's fucking hauling ass right now. Um, and the AK stuff's already, I mean, like I said, I was at C CES. The AK stuff's fucking coming hard. They had a they had a uh, transparent screen. You could see right through the fucking thing. Wow. But you could still see the the video playing. While, but you could see through it. You, you have to just see it yourself to understand. Like, Almost like a hologram. Yeah, it was fucking weird. And just floating in the middle of the, 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 the area or whatever it was at. 
Wait. Everything was fucking AK. If it wasn't, if it wasn't AK, it was a hologram. And it was those fucking. Sp- you see them now on Facebook, right? The spinning discs. Mm-hmm. They were fucking everywhere, man. Those holograms. That shit looks really good in person too. It looks really good. But, uh, but yeah, it's because of these corporate crazy fucking dickheads that they're just soulless people that go to these jobs that, and they make money for a building, right? And <laughs> if they don't know what they're doing, they're not like where we're like, hey, man, let's fucking create some art and put a project together and we'll make a show happen and everyone's super into it. You know what I mean? It's like, no, ducats and money and ducats and money. And it's just like this fuck. I I couldn't. I I I feel I feel bad for them that that's their existence. But they choose it. They choose it for themselves. It's a secure existence, right? You get the fucking benefits, and you get the decent paycheck or whatever. So you give up your soul, and uh, and those people make our fucking world where we get to just live in the world of the soul and always we're putting on shows and we're entertaining ourselves and other people and we're coming up with new creative ideas. And then the, just this trickle down of just beautiful technological evolution that they force, you know, they're up there just force feeding it through the system constantly. If they don't know what else to do with their lives, their, their time, it's just, let's make it better. It works great. Make it better. <laughs> you know, like, let's just, let's keep, let's keep pushing that button, seeing what we can fucking cram out of this thing. Um, I never thought of it that way, but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, you know, you got to take a lot of acid and then you think about things all kinds of fucking fun ways. <laughs> That's the my, my acid days are long gone, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you had acid days, though, man. Had, Fuck. That was the 80s. Yeah. Oh, man. And those, you know, you're dealing with a whole different kind of uh, acid in the 80s, too, I'd imagine. But who knows? I didn't. I've, purple microdot. Yeah. We used to have purple pyramid. Um, and sugar cubes. I've gotten some sugar cubes before. Remember those? And then there mm-hmm. was one other one that I, it was like a blue, it's like a blue little square. I can't remember what they called it though. Tell me a good acid story. Well, um, oh, okay. We, uh, <laughs> and I used to live in the Bay Area. I grew up in the Bay Area. Yeah. In, uh, Fre- in Fremont, California, I spent my high school days. And um, that's when I started kind of delving into music and hanging around with musicians. My, you know, when I was about four, started around 14, 15, in experimenting with drugs. And, it's time uh, to do it. Yeah. And so uh, my, uh, one of my good friends was out. He had heard a rumor about this paraphernalia pit. And uh, he says, uh, so he, he went out there and he checked it out. And he says, man, you guys got to come. He Pulled, he brought back this bag and it had like these old um, bongs, um, like a telephone bong. And he found old uh, an old brass proto pipe, um, those throwing stars, throwing knives, um, pieces of um, of guns. <laughs> it's just all right. kinds of just shit. Just <laughs> shit, yeah, like all with, like with like soot on it, right? And I, yeah. so. He said, we should go back out there tomorrow. We'll bring a couple big packs and we'll fill up. There's more stuff. We've got to kind of dig in the sides. I'm like, okay. So we Digging the sides of what? The sides of the wall of this pit. Okay. So this pit was out in Milpitas, okay. California, which is the next city over from Fremont. So we actually took a bus there. <laughs> and we dropped acid when we were on the bus. Nice. And we went there. And it was just something like out of a movie, man. We walked up to this pit. And it was basically, it was a, it was a, where they had confiscated illegal paraphernalia and guns and, and then t- took it to this pit to dispose of it and burn <laughs> it. But it didn't wasn't completely disposed. Oh. So like I said, first I think the first thing I found was like a beaker, you know, like a like a to cook, you know, with. And I found a couple of those that were in perfect shape. And then I found um some some uh, tutors, some like they look like candy canes. They were blown glass tutors, um, a bunch of different kinds of pipes, um, ceramic, old ceramic, you know, the old style, old school ceramic style pipes, proto pipes, sneak tokes. Um, I'm sure the police station lockup is full of fucking sneak tokes. Oh my god! Right. Every so, other person. So, uh, I found this this vial. It was you know about half the size of this bottle Ooh. and it was 
dark um, brown, like you know, like a color of a beer bottle brown, and it had a uh, had a metal seal on the top of it, and that's kind of weird. It was like had soot all over it, and so I just tossed it in my bag. And then we got back on the bus, frying our ass off, laughing because we had all had a bunch <laughs> of shit. You know, we're like, oh, I'll trade you that for this. You know, we have all this stuff. And we get back to my buddy's house, and we're starting to come down a little bit, and we're starting to look at all of our stuff. And uh, I pull that vial back out, and I'm like, it's like it's like powder. So we break the top off of it and dump it out. I guess it was pharmaceutical cocaine. Nice. <laughs> Because that's probably some of the most powerful, purest cocaine that I've ever had in my life. Well, you're and coming down off of acid, too. That's true. Everything is super <laughs> awesome when you're on acid. But I wasn't the only authority on that. But there were yeah. older guys around me at that time that were like, holy shit. Dude. You know, it was like you just put it in your mouth and your whole mouth just, just came. Probably. <laughs> and on the bottom of the, bo- the, bottom of the vial... Because it went through this burn, right? It had melted. So there was like about a two-ounce hard rock. <laughs> it was just pure rock oh, down there on the bottom of the thing. That's awesome. So we would, we that's the first time I ever um, experienced what we call the cocoa puffs. You know, yeah. Where we would put that on there, the weed. And, oh, okay. And that's it. good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> So yeah, that was my that was one of my more memorable memorable acid trips. Digging uh, <laughs> digging paraphernalia out of the police pit on sure on on acid. That's a good story. That's a good story. Thank you for that. I'm it's sure awesome. that that would never ever happen in, in this day and age again. But back in the '80s, I guess they were just a little more loose about how they got rid of stuff. <laughs> out of the pit. <laughs> Teenage kids will never find that pit. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That's so great. Where'd you, where, where'd you grow up? Where were you saying that was at? That was, the pit was actually in Milpitas, in California. Mil, in Milpitas, California. But I was in Fremont, California at that time in my life, yeah. I, I went to high school there. That's awesome. Yeah. I grew up in the, in Santa Clara, San Jose area, and then I moved to Fremont um, in my junior high year, and then finished high school, and then moved up to SAC. Okay. That was awesome. That is awesome. Super fun. Yeah, I always love taking a little hit with my buddies and going and getting into some mischief. That was always a blast. <laughs> the yeah. 80s were different yeah. times, though, too. Yeah. I mean, you, can, you can't take a bus to a paraphernalia pit on acid right these days, I don't think. No, I don't think that would work <laughs> out so well, right? Like, <laughs> uh, And then you're dragging all this shit back on the bus. In a backpack. In yeah. a backpack. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's all just fucking guns and drugs and <laughs> all covered in soot. <laughs> oh, to be young again. That's so great. Uh, and then my dad found some of that stuff. I put some of that stuff in my little safe. Uh-huh. Those little beakers I was telling you about. I didn't have had any use for them. Well, I guess I could have if I would have took that rock, okay, and we could have probably melted it down or something. Who knows? I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't in You could sh- have made some crack if you wanted, right? Yeah. Could have done whatever. Just, but, just uh, yeah, it's cocaine's better. Yeah. Do the... So uh, he he found some of those in one of my little safes. He opened my little safe, and he found those. And then the next day, he's like, oh, "I I found all this stuff." He goes, "Let me check your arms for tracks." And you know, ah, I thought I was shit. thought I was shooting up and stuff. I was like, "No, I'm not shooting up." He said, "Well, that's what these are for. These are to, you know, you melt down your heroin and your cocaine so you can shoot it." I, oh, okay, cool. Thanks for letting me know, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking funny. I never did shoot anything. I, I was too scared. Fuck that. You're smart. That's what around, that is. I was around a lot of people that did, though. Yeah. I had some friends that were into heroin, too, man. And it's one of those ones I stayed the fuck away from, man. That's just horror story stuff. Every time, too. Anybody get involved with that shit. They're just like, man, I wish I could stop doing this, but I can't. Mm. And it's just like, fuck, bro. That sucks. Like, yeah. Yeah. They're just trapped. Yeah. It's so sad yeah it's sad i won't touch the stuff yeah but yeah you're smart enough i can put needles in your arm man i never did either i i fucked around a lot growing up but i never stuck a needle in my goddamn arm that's too much of a pussy yeah yeah i know i i put plenty of needles through my fucking uh body just for 
for body jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> we were always yeah. fucking doing dumb shit like that growing up. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, damn. Yeah, no, I, I had a buddy of mine who, uh, fuck, he uh, he was just sitting there, just to you know, openly admitting to me the weakness that heroin is it just um, putting him where he's just like, I got, you know, 20 bucks to my fucking name. He's like, I'm, I haven't eaten in two fucking days. He's like, I really should go buy some food. He goes, but I ain't spending that 20 bucks on food. He goes, I'm, I have to go buy heroin. He goes, stay the fuck away from heroin, bro. He goes, I gotta, I don't even like doing it anymore kind of thing. And it's just like, damn, it's that bad, huh? He goes, I'm fucked, man. He goes, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. He goes, I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. I'm going to go buy some food. <laughs> yeah. I had, so I had a similar talking to from a, a friend of mine's dad that was a, a really nice guy, but he was addicted, and he took it upon himself to show us, you know, the how shitty it really was. Oh, know? yeah. Not, not necessarily going out and scoring and all that, but just the actual event of doing it it just to me it was just yeah ridiculous. and where and where where did he end up doing it right like where was he it, shooting up at bathroom in a bathroom yeah yeah. Like, yeah there's no glamour or anything at least when you're smoking a joint with your buddies you can hang out and smoke a joint or if you're going to do a line you can you know pass the plate around and you're all kind of hanging out in the kitchen or wherever or in the family room but when you go to shoot up it's kind of like you got to go off to the bathroom and kind of hide yeah. it just there's like no no glamour in it. No, no. There's definitely not glamour in it. That's a that's a personal experience. <laughs> can't it can't be explained. Yeah, but he 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 did say the same thing that your friend said. That he's fucked. He's like, I I don't even want to do this anymore. But I have to. Like I'm stuck. Yeah, the addiction's so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I hope you know that he says if he doesn't do it, he's gonna get sick. That's what he said. Yeah, that's yeah. what happens with the addiction big time. I've uh I mean, I've personally dealt with a lot of addiction in my life and uh and yeah, you you gotta deal with a lot of bullshit coming down off of a substance that you've been that you've addicted your body to. It's like um I I've I mentioned this before um on the podcast, but I heard recently um that the hangover is actually um in, it's a with it's with uh, it's withdrawal symptoms mm-hmm. because alcohol is so addicting that just one bender, one good night of drinking and you wake up hungover, you're actually experiencing withdrawals. Um, and that's why um, having some hair of the dog, you know, drinking a little bit of whatever you were up to the night before that you had made your body addicted to. Um, it evens you out. It evens you right out. All of a sudden, it's like, I feel great. That's it. That's addiction. That's withdrawals, right? And, um, and so just think about Heroin. your worst hangover ever, right? And just multiply it by probably 100. I don't know what it is. Crystal meth probably multiply that by 50, right? I've experienced that one. That one sucks. I was, fucking, I was a dumb teenager, man. But oh, yeah. makes you play fast. Oh, yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, stay the fuck off of those fucking drugs, man. Those chemicals. It, it, those, um, yeah, those, those come downs are sometimes impossible, you know. Uh, I know alcohol was a really hard one for me. Personally, I had to, I had to stop drinking I had countless times I'd lost track about how many times I'd quit drinking and fallen off the wagon, quit drinking and fallen off the wagon. Um, just fighting that demon growing up and the cigarettes and the cocaine all came along with it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, finally, you know, you just somehow managed to will your way out of that. But those are, those are rough weeks, like the first couple of weeks of that, you know, up, up to like the first month of the whole cleansing process um, is it's just hell. It's a nightmare. You can't sleep, you know, you get hot and cold flashes all day long. You feel sick to your stomach, you know, you're just, your whole body aches. It's just a miserable feeling, man. It's the worst thing. And, uh, but you have to experience it. You know, I think it's important that it, those kind of things do that to you. I think that's a good balance that they give Um, because you can't do them all the time and they don't solve your fucking problems. They don't do, they're just, they're mainly, they just create more problems. Um, But it's a lesson we all got to learn. You know, not all of us. Some people are good about it. Some people are like, I've never drank a beer my whole life. Some people don't have that, uh, that addiction gene in them either. Yeah. Yeah. 
I certainly have it. Oh, I do too. It's, I get it runs strong in my family. I yeah, have years of alcoholism on both sides. Oh yeah, my family too. Both sides, alcoholic as fuck. Yeah. Do you still drink? Occasionally. Occasionally. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. The good word with it. Well, I never was, get to the occasionally it was part. Really, it was really nice to uh, go up camping and sit by the campfire and have a, have a nice drink sitting sitting there and watching the fire and not having to worry about being anywhere but looking at the stars and relaxing. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm due for some camping. I just went last month, but I'm due for some I could, camping already. I could go every week. Yeah. <laughs> Big time, man. Big time. I got a really nice little camper, too, so it makes makes it comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that camper would be the way to do it, man. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of work that goes into prepping it and, you know, and then maintaining it and, and it's more fuel to tow it and all that. And Yeah. But, uh, you know, and you can't go as fast as you would go in a vehicle out of tow. But all those things said, it's still it's just nice. Like, it's got a nice, soft, clean mattress in it. So you can just you crash to sleep like you do at home. You're not sleeping on a hard, you know, tent floor or a, or a blow-up cushion, you know. Oh, bro. And it's got yeah. a shower. So if you finally get dirty enough, which after about four days, you're kind of feeling a little grimy, you know, you're... Your fingernails are dirty and your hands are stained. <laughs> yeah, four days is all it needs. So it's nice to take a little shower and then, you know, it's got the bathroom, it's got a refrigerator, a stove, and all that. So it's it's nice. Can you imagine just going through life not showering all the time? No. That's fucking everybody had to deal with that shit for so long. I know. Up until just like a hundred years ago, <laughs> everyone was just like, "Yeah, we all stink." <laughs> Just part of life. Yeah. You just stink. Perfume. Put some fucking perfume on it, man. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy to me that that's just how it was, you know? Yeah. Just everybody, right? Like, it, we were so spoiled. We don't, shit's evolving around us so fast, we don't even, like, appreciate how amazing we have it. Yeah, it's it's uh, crazy. I I certainly do. Yeah, but I, I I guess it's easy to to maybe take things for granted these days. That's for sure. I don't think. I mean, I grew up with before cell phones and stuff. You know, I grew up when we still had a the dialer on the phone. <laughs> I remember that. You know, we got a we got a rotary phone oh, right there, there too, yeah. bro. Yeah, exactly, same thing. I had one you know, growing up. How old were you when you got your first computer? We had computers in the house when I was, I'm going to say 1975. Okay. My, my dad had uh, a, the green screen Radio Shack computer, I remember. He, he was a computer guy. He he took computer science in, in high school. And oh, so he, you guys had a when, nice computer probably too for the 70s. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I remember him being on it all the time. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know if it was considered a computer or not, but we had Atari. Yeah. And, too, we had the, the Pong, Atari Pong, and then later on down the road we got the Pac-Man and the Asteroids and <laughs> Defender. Nice. <laughs> I remember that, but that was, I, I want to say that was like 75. Fucking A. Yeah, yeah that was seven. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. So you got to you got to live the real life, man. I love that. I what, love that. The real life. Yeah, you know, everybody's growing up with the internet as an existence, right? Like even when I, I grew up in mm-hmm. I was born in eighty five. So by the time the internet happened, it was like like it I I was basically born into the internet. You were, I was, yeah. yeah. You were for sure. Um Yeah, because yeah, when we were sitting around like this as kids, you know, um, yeah. in the mid eighties when you were born. You know, I was in my first band in 88, and I remember, like, we were trying to, like, contact club owners and trying to contact recording studios, and you had to, like, wait for them to call. Yeah. You know, you couldn't, like, dial them on your cell phone. You know, you had to wait for them to call your house. Oh, yeah, you had to sit at the house, And if you weren't there, they hopefully they'd leave an answering machine message, which that happened one time. That's a good story. Um 
my very first band, we actually were um, asked by um, Neil Sean of Journey oh. to come in and actually record in his studio in the Bay Area in Oakland. That's tight. And, what was yeah, the name of the band? The name of the band was Faith. 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 Okay. Yeah. And we would record it at a demo, and we brought it to his 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 scout saw us play at a show, and um, he we gave him a copy of the demo, and Neil liked it, and said he wanted us to come record, and so actually it made the band broke break up because I guess it was too much pressure for us to do that. But they didn't believe that actually Neil the there was a couple of guys in the band that didn't believe that Neil Sean had actually wanted us to do this. And he had actually set us up with a hotel room and set us up studio time in the studio. He was paying for it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and those we guys were, flaked on it? Oh God. Because they didn't believe it. Just because they didn't believe it. And and because they didn't like the the guy the the guy his scout uh, his name was Johnny Patek Patrakis yeah. I'll never forget because when we first met him he offered us such a blow and stuff and they're like mm, I don't know about this guy he's kind of weird you know it's creepy he's being a homie but but anyways so this is the so, music business so the the band the band breaks up we don't do the recording and a couple days later I get a phone call from the drummer which is where we used to practice at his house. And he goes, man, I, he goes, I, I got to apologize to you. He goes, I didn't believe you, but I have a message on my answering machine from Neil Sean oh, asking no. why we're not there. <laughs> it's like, you son of a bitch. Ah, <laughs> oh, bro. Neil Sean too, man. Yeah. They, he would, you would have been open for Journey. That's what you would have been doing. Maybe. Not maybe. Dude, you know how it works. Yeah. If Neil Sean's paying for your record, right. you're gonna he's going to want his money back, and that mm -hmm. means he's going to have you open it and for Journey. Back then, Journey was the shit. You yeah. Know? Journey's yeah, still was, the shit, but yeah. I mean, nobody wants to, you know. Yeah. Well, I guess they're recording a new album right now. I just heard yesterday. No way. With yeah. the, the karaoke dude? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. They're all sending their parts to Neil. They're recording it on their own uh, software and then sending them into Neil, and Neil's mastering it, I guess. That's tight. Yeah. I just heard that yesterday. I'll listen to that shit, man. Yeah, what a great rock star story that is, right? That dude who uh, who was just singing karaoke Journey all the time. In, and they, in the Philippines. Now he's in Journey. <laughs> oh. It's just like the movie Rockstar, man. This fucking world is made out of magic, bro. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool that that happens. It is cool. I had some similar things happen to me, like um, you know, growing up in the Bay Area and in Sacramento. One of my favorite bands was Tesla, and uh, I've, I've seen them n numerous times here at the House of Blues, and got to meet and greets and met them all and talked to them and, talk and saw them back in Sacramento in the day because they were like kind of like our little underground band, you know, because they were from Sac, and they still all live out there. But uh, when in uh, 2006. Um, I recorded one of my old songs with a guy by the name of Al Miller, who was um, a DJ on KOMP for 20 years on the Rock and Roll Morning Show. I don't know if you ever listened to KOMP or not, nah. but, but uh, they were like the number one rock station out here in Vegas for years. And uh, so I, we were friends, and I told him I had the song, and he agreed to record it with me. And then that kind of led into a musical kinship, and he'd invite me to come jam with his band, he had a band that played around with, it was kind of co coincided with the radio station events. Like they do K comp kegers, they called them. And then they, they their, his band would play and then he'd have me come in and sing a couple songs or something like that. Or I'd play a Brian Head sometimes with um. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, he called me out of the blue one day and he goes, hey, he goes, we got Frank Hannon from Tesla coming in the studio for an interview tomorrow. He goes, I know. I go, I, he goes, I know you're a fan. He goes, uh, you want to come down and maybe sit in and sing a song? And I was like, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, I know you know a lot of the material. And I go, okay, yeah, let's do it. You know? <laughs> oh, shit. You yeah. know? So uh, I go, it's, he calls me, you know, it's like a midweek afternoon. I'm driving home to Pahrump. So I'm like, shit, I immediately turning Tesla stuff on my iPod or on my radio, just trying to figure out what I can, or on my CD player probably at that time, just trying to get myself fresh with the material. And, um, I get up early because this is a morning show, so they start at like six, you know, in the morning. So I got up extra early, drove in to get there at studio by six, and uh, I get there and Frank Hannon standing outside, half asleep, his hair is all pushed to one side, and 
And I'm like, trying, you know, I have, I'm already had two cups of coffee. I'm all and nervous as shit, right? And my and my buddy Al goes, "Hey, Frank, this is my friend Drew. He's when I told you, he kind of sounds a little like Jeff." And Frank looks at me, he kind of gives me this, "Hey, what's up?" You know, like that. I'm not like, "Hey" or anything. It's like, you know, I know he's half asleep, and it's early for a rock star, you know. Yeah. So he he goes, "Yeah, let's go in the studio and get warmed up." So. Frank starts playing, and man, I mean, that guy is just an incredible player. I'm sure you've seen him play. I think you did sound for him. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. you know, he's a great guy. He goes, no, no reverb on the vocals, <laughs> and I was, and I was like, yeah, of course, no, no reverb on the vocals, Frank. <laughs> and then the room is so it's it's got its own uh, you know reverberation to it, and so uh, and he was just. He was insistent that I had reverb on his fucking vocals the whole time. And I was just like, I swear I don't have reverb on your fucking vocals, man. <laughs> he's pretty particular. You know, he's a, yeah. he's a, you know, big studio guy. He's recorded other bands and stuff too. But this is long before that show. I think that sh that was probably one of the shows that I played. My band opened up for. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 But anyways, this was in 2006. Which band was it that opened up for him? Uh, Tailgun. The Tailgun Man. Okay. Yeah, Tailgun. That was later on, like maybe 14, 15, 16, something like that. But yeah, you've been in so many. This is, yeah, no. This was 2006. And so we go in the studio and he starts playing, and I'm just immediately just going, oh, this guy's amazing. I love his playing. And uh, he starts playing, I think, um, Little Susie or something, you know. And, and uh, so I start singing, and then he's like, you know, he's like half asleep playing. And then he hears me sing, and he, he looks up and he goes, <laughs> yeah, he starts rocking out and he gives me the smile and he's like, Yeah. Nice. He's like, That sounds good, dude. And I'm like, Cool, thanks. I go, I'm glad you like it. And he goes, Yeah, let's 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 do this. Let's do this. I wasn't sure if we were gonna do this, but definitely I want to do this. That'll save me. I don't want to sing because I gotta sing at the kegger party tonight. Yeah. And I'm like, Okay, cool. Yeah, for sure. So it was supposed to be like three songs. So we did and, and I can't tell you exactly which ones they were, but they were probably ones off the first album and and um and then that turned into six songs. He <laughs> wanted me to keep going. And He's so, having fun. Yeah. And so then my phone starts blowing up because all my friends are hearing me on the air singing Tesla with Craig Cannon. And I'm just like, man, that, that was like a true rock star moment for me because I, I really wasn't in a band at that point. I was just starting to get back into it. I had put it down for a while to raise my family. And so, uh, you know... Uh, the phone's ringing off the hook, lots of compliments coming in and stuff, and, and uh, the show comes to an end, and I put my work shirt back on and drive back into work and go to, back to work, do my day job thing, and I answered a few phone calls. You know, people are like, oh, that's crazy. That's so cool. And then um, I get a phone call from a 916 area code, and I go, it's calling me from Sacramento. That's weird. Hello? Hey, Drew. Yeah, this is Frank Hannon. Hey, Frank, what's up, dude? He's, hey, man, I want you to do me a favor. Can you come to the show tonight and sing on stage with me? I'm like, sure, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, he invited me on stage, and I sang Little Susie with him live on stage here at the uh, at this casino right here. Uh, this uh, Silverado? This, uh, yeah. 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 That's awesome. South, yeah. Point. That's South, Point. South, South Point. Point. Yeah, we played on, on outside stage where the pool is. It was a kegger party for KMP. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. You invited me up and I got to sing. That's, That's so awesome. great. Yeah. And then about, by about 2008, I started getting into bands after that. Well, I think that's a great time to push it into some of the band stuff. Let's see here. We got... Uh, we got DrewJackson.com up in here. Let's cut to the let's cut to the website. Show off the website a little bit. Yeah, my mom does all that. Oh yeah. Yeah, she does a great job, doesn't she? See, I like how the the, the photo and then the background comes up over. This is Squarespace, isn't it? Uh, no. No. No, it's um. I should know this. It's a pretty popular platform. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see, you'll see at the bottom. Oh, uh, it says Fastman Web. Yeah, that's that's her. That's her? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you got rid of it. It doesn't say on there. It doesn't say where it's from. She's hiding it. Yeah, that's okay. That's how you want to do it. Which one should I do? So, well, we're going to do the Sweet Home Alabama tribute next. Let's do replay this one. Are they both Sweet Home Alabama? Yeah, those are both Sweet Home. Which one do we want to see? Oh, let's just put this one up. <laughs> Let's 
see the cannery casino. At the cannery? Yeah. Oh, shit. I love her. Mary, yeah. Yeah. I do too. She's not in the band anymore, but... She's in every band. She's at one point or another. Much. Yeah. <laughs> She's that amazing. She can be. Yeah. I'm actually going to have to hit her up and ask her to be on here. I haven't seen Marion forever. Yeah, she just was on the cover of the, uh, the local rock magazine. Oh, yeah? That Dwayne and uh, his wife do. Um, Vegas, Vegas Rock, I think it's called. Or something. Oh, Vegas Rocks, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so you're doing the Sweet Home Alabama thing currently. Yeah, I'm doing that and doing uh, Jackson Outlaw, too. The Jackson Outlaw was going to be the other. Yeah, I was going to mention that next. It's Jackson Outlaw. There's not... Uh, oh, here we go. So it just has a little thing about Jackson Outlaw. Drew Jackson, Jeff Outlaw, J.P. Michaels. Cool. Oh, there's a Jackson Outlaw page? Um, oh, not yet. It's, it's under yet. construction. It's under construction. I see. I see. This damn COVID stuff's kind of put a wrench in things for the moment with budget and yeah. what we want to do. But uh, so you know, there's three. There's basically three different versions of what I'm doing with with these players. The the first one is the uh, Sweet Home Alabama tribute, which is right. a real tribute. It's a six player tribute of just Skinnerd. And then um, that's our like our our benchmark one. That's where you know when casinos want a true tribute show, we, we give we sell them that one. And then if they're looking for something a little more cost effective, um, then we do a five piece, and we do we do Skinnerd, but we also mix in um, Southern rock and classic rock, like you just heard. And then we do some country as well. And then Jackson Outlaw is kind of the third price point. So we're three players, and we can you know, mostly acoustic. Okay. If they want us to put a drummer in there, we can. We can go for a piece. But usually we just, when the people are looking to try to keep their budget down low and, and we don't want something to really blow the roof off, then we just do the acoustic thing. And and, um, and we do play, play pretty much all the same material. Yeah. But we just, a little bit more country. No, and that's smart, though, man. That's really smart because uh, a lot of clients are going to be looking for that kind of stuff. Well, you know? we found out that, you know, talent buyers are... They have a budget. They have a budget, and they're also not really... Um... Okay, I'm just going to say it. They're lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. And they don't want to make five calls to get five different things when they can make one call and get five things. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we so. do it We do it in the... Uh... In the production industry too, where there's like, oh, you need an audio engineer. How many, uh, how many more audio engineers you need on that show? Because I got my, uh, me and my brother and my girlfriend and all those other people down here. They're audio engineers too, and they're just right. like, oh yeah, that's right. They're good at the job too, huh? So, yeah, and you can hook all your homies up, or you know, make their life easier. Right. They don't want to fucking call four or five more people. Right. And you know? like the talent buyer wants to maybe book three different types of shows, but doesn't want to make three different separate phone calls when you can call one person and have three different kinds of shows yeah and three different price points i try to be that guy too man yeah you know make it easy make them make it they you want to be the first person they call yeah right you yeah. want to be that guy on the list where they're just like oh if i call jason it'll fucking save me a lot it's, of time it's done yeah yeah it's a done deal i don't have to worry about it yeah that's the way to do it man that's the way to do it for sure so, so that's cool that's smart man getting them out there well it worked we like I said, we played a lot last year. <laughs> yeah. Last two years, really. 18 and 19, we were pretty darn busy. So Yeah, last year was killer for me. That was definitely the best year I had. Me too. But I, uh, fuck, I was just nonstop. I was literally working for month blocks where it was just like 30 days on, and then I'll take like a couple days off to get my shit together, and then 30 days on. I was just like, I don't know how I'm doing this, but yeah. the checks were nice, you know? At the end of the year, it was nice. Yeah, it was. So. I was doing the same thing. I was running yeah. pretty ragged. You Dude. Know, it was, you know, sometimes two, two, three shows on a weekend and then right back to work on Monday, you know, like not missing a beat for, you know. It's brutal. A couple months straight. Yeah. It's it, it, brutal. It gets tiring. It does, man. But like I said, the money's good. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'll do it for I'll do it till I'm 40, and then I'm gonna back way off. Hopefully, I hopefully I'll be doing this only when I'm 40, right? Like this, this I, advertising dollars on this show are gonna be fantastic. There you and go. I'm gonna, and I'm just gonna focus solely on this. That'd there be ideal. Yeah. Well, I said. I said that too. I said, oh, there's no way I'm going to ever be doing music after I turn 40 and I'm, I'm 52 now. No, you're going to do, <laughs> it's the other thing you're not going to be doing, right? You're right. going to do music till you fucking die. Well, now I, now I kind of know that, but no, I'm talking yeah. about, I shoot, I remember when I turned 30 and I thought it was over. Dude, I had that same dude. With, I was out with Cracker Man, and we're like, "Fucking smash it all, and let's make a fucking big scene." And like, we gotta get noticed. We're turning thirty. Oh man, we were in panic mode. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now here we are, five years later. Like, yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, I like it. You I know, do too. I like it's it's a little it. more, a little more a mature approach, a little more relaxed, a little more know what to expect. I think. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of get your groove going on what you are as a as an entity on this planet, you know. Mm -hmm. You find out the little the little niche things you like, and you just just dig into those fucking things, man. Be exactly. you, kind of thing. And yep. you, you you figure all that shit out when you're in your twenties, and it, that's a confusing time. Yeah, that it is. is a confusing fucking time, and you're dealing with a lot of bullshit. I know I was dealing with just getting my life straight. I was just a fucking wreck. I was an animal. I was just out there. <laughs> Mixing bands, playing in bands, and drinking myself to death. Just thinking that was what life was all about. Just lost. Shit was rough. I mean, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Meaningless. And waking up hungover. Fuck. I remember realizing, like, I quit drinking again. Or maybe, uh, it was probably like the first time I really quit drinking. And I was just like... Fuck, I think I've been hung over for like the past almost like 10 years or something like that, you know? Probably. Like, uh, I mean, I started drinking when I was a teenager, you know? I was fucking playing in Me bands. Too, and yeah. yeah. Dropped out of high school and just toured and played in bands and It would have been kind of boring, though, if I wasn't drinking back then, I think. Yeah. No, life would have sucked. What else did you have going on, right? When you're like, that's like the time to drink is when you're a teenager, you got no fucking responsibilities. <laughs> Uh, you know, you don't got a house that you're going to lose or, you know, a car that you're going to lose or, you know, a job that you're going <laughs> to I mean, I had a job in a car. I didn't have no fucking house, though. But uh, and you sleep in a car, right? Mm -hmm. More booze. Yep. Fucking, uh, uh, no, it was definitely the time to do it for sure. I, uh, I had a blast. And, yeah, it sucked. Fucking we were growing up in, I was growing up in Stockton. You were saying Fremont. I'm sure it wasn't much better. I mean, there's nothing to fucking do. When you're a fucking kid, you got yeah. so much fucking energy and, like, it just. Was, it was either music or fishing. It's always been that way for me. Yeah. Those, are my, those have been my releases. Yeah. And now hunting, camping, you know. The elk hunting is pretty cool, man. I dig that. I dig that a lot. I took uh, Tanya's kid. Tanya and her son both went and got their hunter safety done and got their licenses last two years ago. And then last year was our first successful year at a draw, and we all drew um, mule deer tags. Awesome. And I, I put the kid on the first one, and he got he got his first deer last year, so that was cool. And I put Tanya on the second one, and she muffed. Ah. She missed the shot. She closed her eyes. Oh no, she closed her eyes. <laughs> Tanya. Yeah, all the practicing, all the hiking, all the all the uh expectations of what was going to happen and she just got nervous and closed her eyes. That's a hunt though. Yeah. Yeah, no, we got there. We were right there. Could have gone either way. But it was still fun. Yeah, it's fun to just go. Are you talking about Joe Biden? <laughs> <laughs> that guy can't remember what the fuck he had for lunch it's because he fucking has got so many lies in his head he can't keep can't Dude. keep it straight no more can you it's imagine all the lies that guy's told in his in his career unbelievable amounts of bullshit that come out of those <laughs> fucking people's mouths man career politicians i don't think they even know what the fuck they, they say don't, anymore they, they don't, don't care i don't think they believe anything that they say no, either they don't. i don't think i don't think like biden was saying the other day that we have nine years left on this planet or before you know it's going to be a 
the crisis with the energy and I don't know. And I'm like, no. You know, well, then are you going to sell your Oceanside house because the fucking sea level is going to flood your house out? You know, no. No, no you're not. You're not. And yeah. Like I said, I don't think they don't believe their own bullshit. They just spew it trying to get votes. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. They'll say literally anything. They will. Like the, um, the one that pisses me off the most is the college debt thing. <laughs> They're literally trying to bribe people to vote for them. They got nothing else, but we'll give you money. I'll they, give uh, you money if you vote these for me. Poor kids are strapped to a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollar or more tu tuition. Yeah, and they and they make minimum wage, and they and they're like, "Fuck! If I didn't have that, yeah, I could be really doing good right now. I'll vote for them." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll take the two hundred thousand dollars, please, <laughs> please, and thank you. Mm -hmm. But no, that's not uh, that's not how it works, man. And that system as well is broken. You know, the university is. system's broken. These fucking, uh, you, you shouldn't be paying that much for an education, first of all, because it's beneficial for us to have educated people in our country. So, like, I mean, why are we making it so difficult and, and then, putting and people at, in such a burden? Look education these days. The education's crap now. It's garbage. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm... I'm literally on a fucking complete overhaul of what I was put in here growing up. I'm just overhauling the whole thing. All my history lessons, math lessons, fucking chemistry, all the fucking everything. Like I'm just like, start from scratch, like you know nothing, right? And I started doing the fucking basic edition on MIT edX fucking classes, you know, like starting from one plus one. Cool. And uh, because I just don't know what they put in there. I don't know what they put in there and what bullshit I fucking spew out of my mouth that's just complete garbage. Um, because I got a public education and that's a shit education in this country. It used to be, it used to be a good thing. Yeah. Well, every year they, you know, let's cut the education budget again. Let's cut the education budget again. I don't know a single just, year just cut that the education here. budget got cut. Just cut it or again here cut. and ours, is our, I think we were what, like 49th in education. Yeah. Let's cut it. Let's cut the budget back some more. Well, what's the fucking point anyways? Let's just stop oh. sending kids. Just Nevada let's, doesn't need to send their kids let's, to school. Let's make weed legal so we can put all that tax money back into our education system. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those people were denying that money, too. They were like, we don't want your fucking dirty drug money. And it's like, we're trying to help the system. <laughs> it's like, what this, this marijuana fucking movement is like making huge fucking progress. And it's like, you could just, you're just going to sit in the fucking 70s and pretend like it's fucking dare time. Like, get over yourself. <laughs> Fuck, man. But yeah, it's education's everything too. But we don't, we don't have a good education system. It's it's, it's this old system back when the uh, industrial revolution was coming around, mm -hmm. and it was just like let's make factory workers that show up to fucking work on time and could do what they're told and repeat what they're fucking told. And it's like that's not educating anybody on anything. I was a great test taker. I could remember a lot of things that you need me to remember to take a test. Could I tell them to you today? No, because I didn't learn those fucking things. I remembered them for a week to repeat them on a test. It's just regurgitation. You go in. That's our education system. And it does nothing. It's over. It's over fucking um, exaggerated fucking daycare. That's how I learned to memorize lyrics. Yeah. This is an education system. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. And I get the, 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 the test taking process and everything, but uh, people don't all learn the same way either. It's not, it's not functional for like the vast spectrum of fucking brains out there. The, the way people view reality and the way people take information and catalog it in their brain. There's just so many different ways to do that. Uh, and... Um, so many different ways to learn things and at different paces, right? Certain right. people pick certain things up, but they're not going to pick everything up. And well, you just I think there's a way that we could find early on what, what, you're, what you excel at. Yeah. And then that's where your learning development goes that direction. Like we know this guy's an audio engineer. Like he's got that brain. He's wired that way. Let's, yeah. let's, let's start his education in that direction while he's six. Yeah. You know? I loved all the math <laughs> stuff when I was a kid, man. I hated math. I love it, dude. I was numbers guy. make sense to me, and that's just my yeah. brain, though, right? Yeah. Like everybody's got a different. Everybody's got saying, a different everybody's brain. Different, so, but but you painstakingly had to sit through all the other stuff that was probably a waste of your time yeah. learning yeah. when you could have really probably excelled more on that direction of what what you're good at, and yeah. that's that's where I think our education systems fail because everybody's good at something. Yeah, and, and 
there's people bad at shit that don't need to be spending time doing it. You know, I was horrible at algebra. I yeah. miserably failed algebra in, in school. I, I didn't like it. And I've never had to use it my whole life. Yeah. I really haven't had to use it. You know, it's not really come in handy in any respect for me. And it was just all it was for me was a tremendous pain in my ass and made me uh, made me upset. And, yeah. You know, and I could have took that time and learned something else. I could have put it into music or, or you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and that's, and, and for me personally, it's, uh, history. I, I loved history. I love history. Too. I, 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 I was always good in English. Um, you know, I, I've sp- I, I speak Spanish. I don't know if I told you that, but I'm also, yeah. yeah, I took a couple of years in high school and I've been speaking it ever since I started the landscape industry. I speak it every day. Fucking A. So, so that was something that I liked, you know, and, um, but a lot of people didn't like Spanish. Yeah. Okay. Well then don't waste their time. But you know, I just, I'm glad I learned it cause it's, a valuable tool for what I, you know, what I do every day. Well, and your brain works differently too once you start doing that. Once you start learning an instrument, once you start learning a new language, once you start um, manipulating your reality in these different ways uh, growing up, you start observing reality in different ways. Mm-hmm. You know, you start comprehending everything different. And uh, it's, it's super crucial to be able to fucking find those strong points in people and really push them and help people drive them because I, I see so many um so many people are stuck just not uh confident in the abilities of their brain and it's like dude you have a human brain you have a human brain are there people that are smarter than you sure that doesn't mean that you're not the most intelligent thing that's ever existed on this fucking planet and that you don't have the most complex object known to the universe inside of your skull well in these days now with with this thing and and all the different, you know, with Google especially, but there's so many different ways to obtain information for a young person that's really interested in something now, which we didn't have. When oh I yeah, was a kid growing you up. had to go digging. Yeah, we had encyclopedias. You need a library card. We had encyclopedias. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> library cards. <laughs> I used to love the library. We actually, I went to the library to vote on the most recent election, and I was like, "Fuck, I haven't been in a library in so long." It's like they're um, becoming extinct. I need to go back, man. Like I want to go get a library card, <laughs> thirty-five, and start checking books out. <laughs> I was such a nerd, such a friggin' nerd. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make it a point this year too to uh, start studying scripture more. I uh, I was doing dude. that a few years back, but I'm gonna I'm, I got the Bible out the other day and it's I dusted it off and I sat it on my nightstand. So I'm gonna start working I on love that. that. I uh, I read four chapters of the Quran this morning. Did you? Yeah, I'm on the Western religions kick, so I have the Quran, the Bible, and the Torah all lined up. I got fresh versions of them upstairs, uh, so I'm uh, I'm almost done with the Quran. And then moving on to the Bible and then to the Torah, kind of doing the backwards That's route. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's just it's a good idea. Yeah, and you know, it's, just, it's good. Uh, it's good to put it in my fucking head. And because uh, me personally, I'm 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 into the uh, the Eastern religions more, right? Taoism, Buddhism, those speak to me more on a spiritual level. Me too. Then, um, but there's then some say valuable. The, there's the, some valuable. The, 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 the boss man kind of version of the religion, right? Right. Because for me, honestly, I think they're all saying the same thing to you, right? Like, um, like I just think they come at you in a different way, right? Like Buddhism's like, here it is, right? You're a big boy. There it is. Just do these things, right? And you'll be disciplined and stop swearing and don't do drugs and all this fucking, here's a list of it, right? Do all those, you're going to love life. You're going to have a great fucking life, right? But people can't handle that. People fucking can't handle that, right? They're just like, well, no. So then the Western religions come at it from the angle of God fucking says and will punish you if you don't. Mm-hmm. And they're like, ah, oh, fuck, I better get on this. Mm-hmm. And this because they're not like in the Eastern, right? It's like, well, learn it or don't, right? Until you learn this, you're just going to keep cycling through this life until you advance to a certain point where you start concentrating on it. Um. And uh, as opposed to the reward system of if you're a good person now, you'll be rewarded later, um, which I find the reward in being the good person, honestly. I find the reward in the discipline. Uh, but For they, sure. they're all saying the same thing, right? Like even in the, um, I'm, I'm this fucking crazy person now highlighting fucking scripture as I'm reading through it, right? But even in the Torah, even in the Quran, they're talking uh, 
it, it's a, uh, I should go grab it real, but I'm not going to, uh, it, it, it just says, uh, you know, it's talking, it's getting all Eckhart Tolle on you and they all come back to it. Right. Jesus says the same fucking things, right? It's like, be here in the moment. This is all you're ever going to get is, is, is this right now. Uh, and, um, they're all trying to, t- to get that through to you, <laughs> however they can fucking do it. It's this beautiful thing I've been noticing because I'm reading the Bhagavad, uh, Bhagavad Gavita and, uh, and the Book of Tao as well and then all these other fucking books on those books. Uh, I'm just lost in it right now. I'm cool. totally fucking lost in, in the whole religious thing right now in the spiritual. Well, I'm glad we had this chat because that's really motivating me to get to do... I'm probably going to get a Quran now too. Yeah, the Quran... I mean, it's... Um, you know, as, from my layman's perspective, right? Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but that's why I'm reading all three religious books. And then I'm going to go meet with some some people at the different, um, you know, the mosques and the, the temples and the churches and just, you know, talk. And I'll probably put it on my, I'll, I'll do some some podcasting on it. Maybe I'll do 30 minutes for each one and just kind of learn more, kind of grow more and share that experience with everybody after I'm done with each holy book. But um, I don't know what the fuck. I just, I, I love... I love life and I love learning about this stuff and this stuff has been making life so much better. So yeah, it's been a great, it's been a great journey for me starting this whole shift. That's basically what's going on right now too. The yeah. Planet, the planet's shifting. I think consciousness in general is, is doing a big shift, right? Like a lot of people are waking up. A lot of people are waking up to, what the fuck are we doing here? We could do this better, right? We can do this better. So. You think uh, you think rapture's coming? No. Well, how much time do we got? We got six minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I read something the other day that w- was very convincing that that that's what we're coming on to. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not it's not the same thing as what so well rapture I mean, and the singularity I think are the same event. I also think the Mayans were predicting it too, but they were just a little bit off and the fucking Christians kind of threw that off with the the meddling with technology in the dark ages and everything, even though that kind of was happening at the same time, the dark ages and the Aztec civilization. But um but you know, like we're building up to this. We're fucking ramping up real hard right now on the technological evolution Space and the exponential X. growth. We're moving to Mars. We're building fucking robots, artificial intelligence. Fuck it. And so this, oh, this just exponential growth of, uh, of technology is going to spiral into um, just the fucking, uh, I'm terrible with words today. I've been doing this the whole podcast. It's going to shoot in the stratosphere, man. Uh, if you, I mean, uh, part of the shift that we we're talking about. Yeah, like an exponential growth curve. It starts out slow, and then it hits the corner and starts fucking picking up speed, and then it just goes straight up, and um, at a certain point, and you just can't comprehend what's happening so you anymore. Either, you either ca- you either stay up with it or you don't. You can't. You yeah. can't stay up with it. So until you get implants in your brain to keep you automatically like so now i'm getting, getting to crazyville again mm-hmm. uh i read a lot of like ray kurzweil's books on the singularity uh i actually read all of ray kurzweil's books <laughs> he releases a book but uh, uh he's a fucking genius so um so they, they talk about um the the implants that are going to start happening which are already happening right if your brain is damaged right we put microchips in your fucking brain to fix the the destructed part of your brain and it helps uh and it works it works and we're implant and we have um Implants to replace uh, y- uh, your eardrum, right? Uh, ocular implants, and it's just a microphone that goes on your head, and they just bypass where your uh, your fucking eardrum connects to your brain. Uh, and so we're we're already becoming fucking cyborgs, right? And then so around twenty forty five is where the singularity hits. It's really fucking close. Twenty five years is not that fucking far away. Um, so I think all of these things, these holy events, and the fucking Armageddon, and all of that, all occurs within the singularity um, uh, of technology because we'll no longer, the, the definition of the singularity is you can't tell if that's a human being or a robot anymore. Right. That, that it, we have officially merged and we are machines. And so that is the end of the human race, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're not the human race anymore. We're machines that have these biological counterparts. And uh, so, yeah, I think. Are you embracing that? Oh, totally. <laughs> totally, man. I love it. I love it because, you know. This I think is- there's a lot of people that are 
um, of my generation that are not so easy to embrace it because it's, it's, it's just the way that we were raised, I think, you know? Yeah. 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 No, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. And, uh, and you know, it, it'll be the millennials and shit that really, I, I might get it. I mean, I technically am a millennial, so mm-hmm. I'll probably, I'll be, you know, I'll be in my sixties and, um, and I'll, I'll be, I'm up for it. Give me the implants. Yeah, let's do it. I want the nano robots in my blood. I want the artificial heart that pumps forever. I want all that shit. I want the fucking cybernetic brain implants so I can update. I can just, I, I, if I want to read a book, I just go, oh, let's look at the uh, book. They, they and I just have to, it. supposed to be uh, available by uh, October. <laughs> by October. The, yeah. We're not getting that fucking shit free. <laughs> That's the same stay, chip, though. Stay away from, yeah, I know. Same, same thing. It, yeah, exactly. It'll, uh, it's, it's inevitable, man. It, it's but this inevitable. Will be the early version. You kind of probably want to lay back a little bit yeah. and get a better, you know, the the the, the 10G version. Yeah. Well, they're gonna put them in all the fucking kids too. You know, they're, they're gonna get a chip right out of the fucking pussy. Yep. So it's like, what are you gonna do, man? They're gonna. You can't stop that kind of global progress, anyways, man. I mean, you could burn it down. But it's gonna keep coming. It's kind of this, like I said, it's inevitable. Singularity is an inevitability. But uh, oh man, one minute left. Well, that's a good way to end. That's a good way to end it, bro. Dude, Drew, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. My pleasure. This my has pleasure. been to the fullest so with Jason Enjoyed Froberg. Uh, I just want to thank my guest Drew again. Uh, upcoming gigs. Uh, September 18th at Vamped, October 10th, M Casino, November 13th, Bearded Lady, December 10th, 11th, 12th, Casino del Sol. Peace! Hey everyone, thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.